Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Maddie and I am a second year PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my research journey and within that topic I want to talk about kind of what to keep in mind when it comes to picking labs to do research in as well as a little bit of some tips for your graduate advisor. Um, I'm wearing my comfy. That's why I look comfy. <laughs> it's snowing outside even though it is April 23rd. Yeah, winter storm warning. Love, love Montana. I do love Montana. But um, I put in my lime earrings and did very summery makeup to try and feel a little bit better. Anyway, uh, my research journey. I actually started research when I was in high school. So in high school, I was one of those like advanced learning program, high achieving kids kind of thing. And my um, district, what is it called? I guess it's a district, a county. Jefferson County Public Schools had a program called the Executive High School Internship Program. And students like myself could apply for the program and they'd go through like an interview process. You send in a resume, like a, I think I did a personal statement kind of application thing. Um, and then I made it to the interview rounds. And then after the interview round, they were like, yeah, we're gonna accept you. We just need to find a placement. What are your interests? And that actually happened around the same time as my uh, high school visit to Montana State to try and decide if I wanted to go to college here. And I was like, I wanna research something in chemistry, biology, chemical, biological engineering, something within there. And that's because I knew I wanted to do engineering because I like math and I know that you can get jobs a little bit easier in engineering than just a straight up like life science. Um, and I like biology more than I like chemistry. <laughs> uh, so I was like, biological engineering. Um, but that being said, I got placed in a lab at Colorado School of Mines, um, Dr. Brian Truen's lab. He had taken a few different students from the Executive High School Internship Program. And so he had experience having high school interns. And I got placed into his lab, which was a more like chemistry lab than anything I've worked in since. I was working on drug delivery, like encapsulated drug delivery systems uh, using mesoporous silicon nanoparticles. <laughs> and I actually got a, a co-authorship for helping one of his PhD students during my research. Um, that was in, or my research, my time in that lab was from like June of 2015 through December of 2015. So it was the summer and summer between my junior and senior year of high school, as well as the first semester of my senior year of high school. Um, and so that was my first research experience. I didn't really get to choose where I got to do the research or what lab or anything, um, but I did get to say that I wanted to do more research rather than like business applications because that was something that they took in mind when they were like interviewing me about trying to figure out my like placement within the program. His, my time in that lab is really what like set in stone for me, the fact that I wanted to do research in college. Um, in my undergrad and so then I came to Montana State University and there's the Center for Biofilm Engineering here It's actually why I came to Montana State is I wanted to work in the CBE um, and In my freshman year I went to something called the freshman research symposium Which was a thing put on by the honors college to kind of get undergraduates aware of the research going on on campus so that you could look into it more and hopefully join a lab at some point during your time and so I actually went to the CBE my sophomore year of college and I went to the front desk because at this time you could do this and I went to the front desk and just asked if any labs were hiring and the person who was working at the front desk they told me yeah actually the standardized biofilm methods lab is looking for an intern um, an undergrad and I was like oh my gosh okay awesome I went home and I immediately like wrote up a little half pair or half page and put my resume together because I think those were the only two requirements and then I also tried to look up any of the names of the people in the lab like through the MSU website and look at some of their papers and stuff and the SBML is like I said the standardized biofilm methods laboratory so they do a lot of um like testing for member companies of the CBE. The CBE has this industrial program where companies can pay a fee to be a member and we can do testing projects for them so we can test any products that they are claiming may or may not kill biofilms and just um, they can use our like imaging facilities and just all sort of like they can get a lot of advice from professionals in the field from the CBE about their company products, things that they should be looking into, that kind of stuff. So the SBML does a lot of that. 
do a lot of testing projects, um, development of standard methods, and standard methods are used to be able to kind of compare uh, results between labs. If labs are using the same exact method, which has been standardized, then you can easily compare the results that this lab gets for this product and that this lab gets for this product kind of idea. So that's the idea of standard methods lab. Um, and so I sent in my resume that same day. I got an email about an interview maybe a couple of days later and then I did interview a couple days after that. And I do remember being kind of ill during the interview. Like I had my fall semester of my sophomore year is when I interviewed and I had this like weird bronchial thing going on at the time and I had like no voice. I was super hoarse for the interview. Um, but they were basically like, this is what we do. Your resume looks really good. We're kind of concerned that you haven't taken a microbiology class. And I was like, I'm taking one next semester. Um, and then they took me into the lab and was like, this is where we do work. Is this something that's interesting to you? And I was like, I don't recognize any of the things in this lab. And I'm so excited by that. Um, so I started in the SBML that way. So kind of coming back a little bit, I didn't really get to choose that lab. Um, it was the only one at the time that was hiring undergrads and I didn't care. I just wanted to get into a lab because I knew that once you got into a lab, it would be a lot easier to switch labs. Um, the standard methods lab, when I first was looking into everything that they do, I was kind of like, this doesn't seem like super interesting research. I don't know if this is something that really is going to like inspire and motivate me, but I didn't care. I really just wanted to get into the field of research and especially in the field of biofilm research. However, um, like in my interview with the, they weren't the PIs, but they were the people that I worked with the closest. I just like had a good feeling about them being really good people. And I was totally right. They're, they're amazing. I love them. I miss working with them so much, even though I'm still in the same building <laughs> um, and I still see them around quite frequently, but I miss like seeing them every single day for hours on end. Um, but I had a really good feeling about them and the same went for everyone else on the team when I met them, when I, after I had started and was just kind of going around doing introductions, they were all so warm and welcoming and very encouraging. Um, since they knew it was my first college research position, it was obviously not my first research position, which I think helped me get the job. Um, but yeah, initially I wasn't super excited about the research that was going, that I was probably going to be doing, but I actually really enjoyed the research that I did in that lab. I, um, developed, I helped do the like final touches on developing a brand new biofilm reactor and I'm actually listed as like a co-inventor for it. Um, I did some work on some multi-species biofilms um, that was really challenging. <laughs> and then I also worked on um, a standard method for urinary catheter, catheter analysis and trying to develop um, a standard method so that people in like the FDA and stuff can do these laboratory tests before taking it to clinical trials to try and decide what anti-biofilm methods might work in catheters. Um, I kind of was the manager on, not the true manager, but I was like the lab coordinator for this project. That was a six week project for the US Army, looking at bladder, um, like hydration bladders and preventing bio, or not preventing biofilm, but just like assessing biofilm growth in those. Um, and then like the cleaning method at the end to see how well that worked to then kill the biofilm that had grown. Um, but I did a lot of really cool projects and almost more importantly than that, I became very confident in myself as a researcher. And I also had really good relationships with everyone who worked in the lab. Um, but then an opportunity did come to me to switch labs and this is how I know that the people in my in the SBML are great people. My current advisor came to one of the PIs of that lab and was like, hey, I have this money that's probably coming in from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to study antimicrobial coatings in um, CDC biofilm reactors and see if they could be applied in ISS to prevent biofilm growth in the water system. Do you have any suggestions on recent graduates or anyone like that who would be good for this uh, recent undergraduates who had just completed um, and graduated who would be a good fit for this as a master's? And the people I worked for in the SBML were like, 
we don't have any recent graduates who would be a good fit for that, but we do have someone who works in our lab right now who would be a good fit for that. And so they basically, they told my current advisor about me and um, helped me get my resume and kind of like a little personal statement together to give to them. And then the people from the SBML basically like built me up and then told my new boss about me and then like shipped, not shipped me off to my new boss, but like catapulted me into a new position that they knew I would probably be a little bit more excited about and that had more opportunity for growth. And I think that is, that speaks just volumes. Like they, at the time they had only, since I was leaving, there was only gonna be one more person left in, one more undergraduate left in the lab. And they like catapulted me away and this other new undergraduate hadn't even been trained really yet. So they kind of put themselves in a not great position research wise and like worker wise because they knew that it would do a lot for me in my career. And so that I'm so thankful for that. Moving into my next research position with this new advisor, he came to the SBML about this project and then he was like, is this something you'd be interested in? And I was like, heck yes. As a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. That was like my first dream job. And this was probably the closest I'll ever get to being an astronaut is working with NASA on biofilms in space. And so I was like, yeah, that sounds so cool. Um, he was like, it's meant to be for a master's student. And I was like, well, I still have my entire senior year left, but we kind of like talked about the logistics of it. And he was kind of like, all right, well then you can, you can do your senior year and then we can probably do a master's as well. Like we can extend the project for a master's. I was like, okay, great. And I emailed around to some of the students that I knew who worked in his lab and was kind of like, hey, what are your thoughts on him as a boss and as an advisor? I just kind of like, I have this opportunity to join the lab and I'm just curious about the lab culture and everything like that. And the responses that I got were <laughs> incredibly accurate. They were like, he's an awesome person. He's very, very kind and like caring. Um, he is quite hands off as a mentor. Um, if you need help, you can go to him and get it. However, he will let you kind of work on your own. He won't check in on you. He's never in the lab. Um, if you need help, you have to go seek it kind of thing. And I was like, okay, that I think I'm okay with that. Um, and so I decided to switch labs and then I worked out my entire senior year. Halfway through my spring semester of senior year is when COVID hit. And so that definitely kind of changed trajectories because I was unable to, I was not allowed to be in the lab to work on experiments for about two and a half months. Um, I was just doing like data type analysis. And then the fall, like the summerish fall came around and that was the time where I was like, all right, well, this was like something I was thinking about. I was like, am I going to go to grad school and am I going to stay in this lab? And I was like, you know what? It's the middle of a pandemic. I'm just going to go for it, go to grad school. And I, I made a video about my decisions to go to grad school. I can link that as well. But I did decide to stay with my current advisor because I had in the year that I had worked in in his lab, I had developed a pretty good relationship with him. Like, like I said, everything was very accurate. He's very kind, he's very caring, he's quite hands off, but he's there to help when you need it. And not super pushy about getting results, not super overbearing or anything like that, which I think was really important for me. And also I liked the work that I was doing. I was still gonna be working with NASA, for NASA, um, in collaboration with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the time. And I was like, you know what? This just makes sense to stay here. I've also made so many connections within the Center for Biofilm Engineering and I knew biofilm engineering and research in biofilms is why I came to MSU. So why not extend that and stay in the same lab where I have all these relationships? I also really liked my lab mates. I didn't know them super well because I was still an undergraduate and I wasn't spending very much time in the lab. Um, I was kind of like in and out. 
And also we have two different labs, lab spaces. They're right next to each other, but I was in the one that didn't have really anyone else in it. Whereas the other room is where all the other grad students were. And so that's why I didn't really know people that well. And I just had a different schedule than everyone. But in the interactions that I had with everyone else, they were all so kind, again, very caring, um, not very knowledgeable. We're not very knowledgeable on each other's projects just because we all have very different projects, but still very helpful with like troubleshooting and kind of stuff like that and forming connections and being like, oh, this is a question you have. I know this person you should talk to. I'll form that connection for you. And so that was really important to me. The lab culture was very good in my opinion. And so that's kind of why I also decided to stay at MSU and stay within the same lab for my grad school. Um, and that's kind of what brings us to here. Um, currently, I'm in my second year of my PhD, still in the same lab. Um, only a couple of people have left the lab since, um, have graduated. Things have kind of been delayed due to COVID for some people's graduations and other, other circumstances. But yeah, I'm very happy to be in the lab that I am in and also very happy that I've actually been able to start working again with some of the people from the standardized methods lab. Um, we're on this big project together so they've been kind of brought back into my research life which has been just so amazing. It's like an origin story. I love it. Um, but I've been really satisfied with my research trajectory and my research path this whole way. I've never had a negative experience. And something that's also very interesting is I've always been in female dominated labs. Quite interesting. Um, I've always, I've had male PIs for like two out of the three labs that I've been in, but all of my labs have been very female dominated. Like my lab at Mines, I think there was two men who worked in the lab who I ever saw, maybe just one, and then maybe like four or so women. And then it was a big lab, but those are, I'm talking about the people that I interacted with. And then at the SBML, there was one male student for the first like couple months that I worked there. And then I actually ended up taking over his project. And then one of the three PIs was male. And then there was three to six women at any time. And then in my current lab, the advisor is male. There's one male grad student, about to be two male grad students. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, six other women, seven, eight, eight other women than myself. Um, so quite interesting. <laughs> But I think that's all I have for talking about my research trajectory. If you have any specific questions that I didn't really answer, please let me know in the comments. Um, this topic kind of actually came from a, a suggestion in my Instagram DMs. So if you're watching this, you know who you are. Um, that being said, uh, always, always leave me suggestions for or requests for videos in the comments or on Instagram, anything like that. Pretty much anytime. I think every time someone has asked me to make a video, I've made it and I make that like my next priority video. Um, so I do really appreciate your guys' input. Um, but yeah, if I missed something and I only grazed on something that you wanted me to talk about more, let me know in the comments and we can chat. Um, but that is it for today. I actually need to put on not pajamas and go to campus to get some work done since it's the end of the semester. But this video was kind of a method to procrastinate doing that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.